Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we have a very special preview of The Final Frontier. This is a game designed by Kerry Anderson and published by Micro Game Design Group. Now you may say, hey Mo, I've seen this game before and you'd be right. I showed this game last year, the Fiery Dragons game, which is an older tin box game and it is really small. Well, Kerry's got the game back under his control and he'll be republishing it through Micro Game Design Group. It is not available yet, but he sent me an early copy of it so I can check it out. The only thing that may change, as an FYI, is some little parts of the rulebook. He may be still tightening that up a little bit, but generally the game is pretty much done. Not sure when it's going to be available for sale, but this is great because now it's back to its full format size with the full size great counters that come from Micro Game Design Group. Not those really thin, paper thin, terrible counters that came with the Fiery Dragon game. And now it'll work perfectly in concert with Solar Marine, which you can use alongside this game for the planetary combat aspect of the game. This is a Ziploc game, so there's no back of the box to read. So we're going to dig right into the components and see what you have to look forward to. Now we see the cover sheet first, and on the back of the cover sheet we have the battle board that you'll be using during the game. And we have our rules, player aid card, our maps, and our counter sheets. So let's set up the map and take a closer look at the game. And here's a look at the two maps and the system display that you'll get with the game. You're going to take these two maps, you're going to put them together, and that's going to create the solar system map. You can cut off the side edge there, the white parts, so that way they'll match up a little bit nicer. The orbital paths for each of the planets are these lines here, and the planets will be out on these lines and will move every turn one space along in a clockwise direction. You have the game turn track at the top and over here on the system display are all the planets as well as any of the minor bodies that you can land on and will tell you whether it's inhospitable, hospitable, and what the resources are on the planet. You cannot land on Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune as it says at the bottom of the system display. Next we'll take a look at the player aids that come with the game. The battle board is on the back of the cover sheet, and this is where you'll place your units when you're going to be doing space combat. You can see extreme range, orbital range, and then your close approach, and then the planetary surface, which is where you can switch over to using Solar Marine for the planetary combat if you'd like to link the two games together. Next, we have the economics chart. This gives you a cross-reference box for your gross national product, your national interest level, and the deep space movement here along the bottom. And then at the very bottom, we have the national interest modifiers. And one of the key parts here is all players' national interests are affected by hostilities with double the modifier for the player directly affected or attacked. And then on the next sheet, we have the random events table. You'll roll some dice and you'll cross-reference it to see what event takes place. At the bottom, you have the unit summary and production cost chart for both ground base and space-based units. Now we'll take a look at the counter sheets that come with the game. There are four different factions in the game, blue, yellow, green, and pink. The ground units will be the color of the faction with the unit on it, and then the space units will be black with the color of the text being the same as the faction color. We've got the blue and yellow here. We've got planetary defense, marine units, regular infantry, mines, and colonies here. And the colonies, if you see, they've got different numbers around it, kind of like a block. And as the colony increases in size, you'll just spin that block around to reflect its growth over time. And on the next sheet, we have the other two factions as well as the planetary counters that you'll be using in the game. And we'll take a look at the rules. This is a 16-page rulebook. The first bit here, the 21st century, that's a little background fluff that's going to set the table for the universe that the game is set in. Then we have the components, how to read your counters, and then how to use your player aids, as well as the terminology that you'll be using in the game. And you're going to need to understand the definitions of all these terms because they're covered in the rules. They're all explained to you nice and clearly here. Then you have the sequence of play all listed out for you, the planets, planetary movement. Remember I said before, you take your planetary counter, put it down on the orbital path, and it'll move one hex in a clockwise fashion every turn. Economics. You need to run your economics real good because you need money to be able to fight, to be able to move things around, to be able to have your colonies, things like that. That's all explained to you for economics. Political events, hostilities, arms races, colonization. Then we get into space movement, the different types of space movement you can use. You have deep space movement, asteroids, gravity wells, space vessels, orbital stations, surface units, and then marines. Of course, marines are going to be cool because the coolest thing about them really is that they can move with either normal or deep space transports and they can immediately transfer down to the planetary surface if necessary in the same turn. 
Then you have intrasystem movement, space surface movement, lift off, stacking, opportunity, fire. And then we get into combat. All the aspects of combat are explained to you here and how to use the battle board, your space combat, the procedure all for all your space combat. Surface combat is explained to you. Then we get into earth, random events. And there are some pretty cool random events, solar flares, mining accidents, unrest, rebellions, global crisis, things like that. Then we have optional rules here on page 11, asteroid navigation, asteroids, blockades, combat effects on national interest, deep space combat, partial builds, vessel maintenance. That's one of the cool things about the economics. You want to make it a little tougher on yourself. You can actually have vessel maintenance. So that, that way, not only are you building these units, but you're having to maintain them. So I think that's kind of cool. Then there are victory conditions here on page 11. They start to explain that to you. And then we have the scenarios on page 12. Now, if I remember correctly, I have to look back at that other game that I have, the initial one, the Fiery Dragon, but I don't recall there being scenarios in there. I recall there being just the campaign. Here you've got scenarios and there's the standard game, the middle game, and then a world war. And then there's also mini games, including a solitaire game, Comet. Then you have the space monster for two players. So you've got a couple uh, scenarios, you've got another one UFO attack here. So you've got a couple different scenarios immediately. You've got like three here and then three here. So you got like six different scenarios that come in this game, which is pretty cool, including a directly solitaire game. Then you have the linked game. If you want to take your final frontier and use it with Solar Marine, then we have the designer's notes and the credits. And then we have a combat example on page 15. That was something that we did not have in the other book. And then you have the player record sheet, which if you remember looking at the other video, Final Frontier, I did before last year, it came with a pad. Here you just have the one sheet and then you just make as many copies as you need when you're playing the game. And that is a look at everything you get inside of the Final Frontier, Mankind's Expansion into the Solar System. This is a game designed by Carrie Anderson and published by Micro Game Design Group. Remember at the beginning I said this is a special early preview of the game because it's not out yet. It looks like it's ready to go at this point. I know Carrie had said some things that wanted to adjust in the rules, maybe some wording, things like that. But overall, including the rules, I think this game is, you know, ready to go. But it's up to his timetable as to when he's going to make that available. If you've not already gotten this game or you have the old Fiery Dragon game, the little tin box that I showed last year, this is definitely something you're going to want to pick up to upgrade and cast aside that old small fiery dragon one. Those counters were terrible. They were basically just perforated cardstock that you had to tear off and uh, just terrible. Uh, the small form factor was nice, but also you had more player aids than you have here because because you can put more player aids on an eight and a half by 11 sheet than you can on those small sheets inside that tin box. So this is definitely a worthy upgrade. Plus you're getting these fantastic counters from Micro Game Design Group. I love these counters. If you've not played it, it's a really fun game. You can play it solitaire or up to four players. Now you saw that there are extra scenarios now in the game, including solitaire and two-player games. So that's fantastic that he's looking at tightening things up a little bit more to add strictly solitaire and strictly two-player scenarios in the game for you. But it definitely does work solitaire at four. Trust me, it's good and it's a lot of fun. Now with the large form factor game and the better components, it's going to be Fantastic to have this on the table and then go tactical from the macro down to the micro using Solar Marine, which is going to be awesome. And I'm looking forward to getting this on the table and playing it in tandem with Solar Marine again. So if you're interested, keep an eye out on the Micro Game Design Group site and see when this releases. If I see anything, I'll make a note of it as well and let you guys know. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you'd be curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.